Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Since their introduction to the league back in 1986, offer sheets have been the rarest method of acquiring players in the National Hockey League. After all, in the 35 years since they were added to the collective bargaining agreement, there have been just 37 offer sheets in league history, with only 14 of them having actually been successful for the offering team. Given the many risks involved and the hefty compensation required, it's no wonder that offer sheets have been so underutilised throughout the league. Not only does the offering team have to convince a restricted free agent to sign a deal with them and be willing to leave their current organisation, they have to offer him a contract that the other team won't match and pray that the deal is worth it in the long run, both in how the player performs on the ice over the coming seasons, as well as the various high draft picks that the team has to forfeit as compensation. Despite offer sheets being used so infrequently over the years, they became front page news in recent weeks, thanks to the Carolina Hurricanes and their pricey offer sheet for Montreal's Jesperi Kotkaniemi on August 28, 2021. But how did offer sheets start? Who was the first player to sign one and how did it pan out for both teams in the years that followed? Well in this video, let's turn back the clocks and find out. So join me as we explore the NHL's first offer sheet. Let us begin by taking a look at the offer sheet itself, so allow me to take you back to August of 1986, when defenseman Gary Nyland signed a three-year contract worth approximately $620,000 with the Chicago Blackhawks. Since Nyland was a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs at the time, the Canadian franchise had the chance to match Chicago's offer and keep the blue liner on their roster, but after much deliberation, they ultimately decided not to. In exchange for letting Nyland join Chicago, Toronto were awarded forward Ken Yaramchuk, defenseman Jerome DuPont, and a fourth round pick in the 1987 NHL draft as compensation. So who was Gary Nyland, and why did he become the first player to ever sign an offer sheet? Well let's take a look at his career before the offer sheet was signed and see if we can figure out why. The third overall pick of the 1982 NHL draft by Toronto, Gary Nyland would find himself playing in the best league in the world very soon after his selection, as he made the jump straight to the bigs for the following 82-83 season and suited up in 16 games for the Leafs that year. From there, the Canadian defenseman would spend the next three years of his NHL career exclusively with the Leafs, where he scored 54 points and racked up 382 penalty minutes in 202 regular season games. 80s hockey really was a different beast, eh folks? After notching 18 points in 79 games during the 85-86 NHL season, and after registering a whopping 180 penalty minutes that year too, Nyland was in need of a new deal as his contract with Toronto came to an end. Unfortunately, the player and the organisation were unable to come to an agreement, as Nyland couldn't agree to a price or a term with Leafs owner Harold Ballard. This contract dispute was quickly noticed by Toronto's Norris Division rivals in Chicago, who were in the market for a rugged, hard-nosed defenseman and who felt like Nyland could be their guy. This prompted Chicago to offer sheet Nyland by offering him a three-year deal worth $620,000, a contract that Nyland soon signed. Seeing that an agreement between the two parties wouldn't be reached before the deadline, Ballard decided to accept the offer sheet, let Nyland walk and receive his compensation. So thanks to a contract dispute between the owner and his former third overall draft pick, and thanks to a divisional rival needing to fill a position on their roster and striking while the iron was hot, the first offer sheet in league history was not only signed, but successful for the offering team. Now that we know how it came about, was it the right decision? Was the NHL's first offer sheet actually worth it for both teams in the long run? Well... Following his move to Chicago, Gary Nyland would take to the ice with the Blackhawks for the 86-87 NHL season and look to show his new team that they had made the right decision in signing him. Once his debut year in Chicago had come to an end, it certainly seemed like he had done just that, as Nyland registered a career-high 7 goals and 27 points in 80 regular season games. He also racked up 190 penalty minutes that year too, which wasn't an easy feat to accomplish, even for the 80s. From there, Nyland would spend the following 87-88 season with the Blackhawks too, as he scored 19 points and registered a whopping 208 penalty minutes in 76 games during his sophomore year on the roster, but his tenure in the Windy City wouldn't last much longer than that. 
after scoring 5 points and after racking up 63 penalty minutes in the first 23 games of the 88-89 season, on November 25th 1988, Nyland was traded to the New York Islanders, along with Mark Bergevin, in exchange for Bob Basson and Steve Conroyd. So after becoming the first offer sheet in NHL history, Gary Nyland ended up playing just two and a half seasons with the team that had signed him, scoring 51 points and racking up 461 penalty minutes in 179 regular season games for his efforts. Not the greatest numbers in the world, of course, but at least he stuck around for most of his three-year contract, right guys? Having been traded to New York, Nyland spent the rest of that year, as well as the following four seasons within the Islanders organisation, where he scored 63 points and registered 376 penalty minutes in 211 games, before hanging up his skates and calling it a day on his career at the conclusion of the 92-93 NHL season. This meant that after parts of 11 seasons in the league, Gary Nyland finished his NHL career with 32 goals, 171 points, and 1,235 penalty minutes in just 608 regular season games. Not the best career from a third overall draft pick, but he certainly could have done a lot worse for himself, eh folks? And what about the Leafs? How did they fare with the compensation that they received as part of the offer sheet? Well... Forward Ken Yaramchuk would end up playing just 47 games for the Leafs in the three seasons that followed and scored 19 points in the process before embarking on a long and successful career in Switzerland. Defenseman Jerome DuPont, known as Jerry DuPont, played just 13 games for the Leafs during the following 86-87 season and went scoreless in that span before finishing both the season and his professional playing career with Toronto's AHL affiliate at the time, the Newmarket Saints, while the fourth round pick in the 1987 draft ended up being used by Toronto to select forward Joe Sacco. And how did Sacco pan out? Well, given that he was seen as somewhat of a long shot as a fourth round pick, Sacco did end up making it to the NHL and he did play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That said, it wasn't for very long. Between 1990 and 1993, Joe Sacco suited up in 60 NHL games for Toronto and scored 24 points in the process before leaving the team behind and moving to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim for the 93-94 NHL season. In fact, Sacco would go on to play an impressive 738 NHL games over parts of 13 seasons split between five different teams, scoring 94 goals and 213 points in that span. Funnily enough, these career numbers make Sacco the player with both the longest and the most successful NHL career in this video, and he was acquired with the most forgettable and insignificant piece of the original deal. Don't you just love a twist ending, folks? These numbers meant that the Toronto Maple Leafs received a grand total of 43 points and 65 penalty minutes in 120 games from the three assets they acquired as compensation from the offer sheet. Only eight points, 396 penalty minutes and 59 games less than what Chicago got out of Nyland. So was signing Gary Nyland to the NHL's first offer sheet worth it for both teams? Well if you ask the Chicago Blackhawks, it most certainly was. Not only did they acquire the tough, physical blue liner that they were looking for at the time, Nyland played pretty well for Chicago for nearly the entirety of the contract they had signed him to and the Blackhawks didn't have to sacrifice much in order to get him. On the flip side though, Toronto could have done a lot better out of this deal. Given that Nyland played more games, scored more points and racked up more penalty minutes than the three pieces they received combined, and given that none of the three players made an impact for the team or even played a full season on Toronto's roster, it probably would have been better to keep their former third overall pick around for a little while longer. I guess Harold Ballard would have been better off matching the contract after all. And that was a look at the NHL's first offer sheet. What do you guys think about this story? Do you think Nyland was better off moving to Chicago, or do you think Toronto should have matched the offer? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Saeed and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.